Don't take the cool lady, I suppose. <laughs> Drink it all. <laughs> <laughs> and find your way to the albino ginger heaven. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Quackcast. This is Quackcast number uh, 367. I'm Ozan Ocean and with me is uh, the very pretty and beautiful, attractive Baines. Hello. <laughs> I, I, was, I had a feeling it would be me. Those adjectives. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Uh, and uh, the uh, the manly brass balls... Uh, Tansarin. <laughs> the what? Manly owner of brass balls. Exactly. Hello. Uh, Coffee's for closers. <laughs> and the rough, the rough and rugged, handsome uh, pit face. I'm here too. <laughs> All of us together. So we're, we're going to be chatting about um, a couple of things. Uh, first up, I want to talk about the comment reply no, uh, like notification system, the prototype that we've got up on the site that we raised all that damn money for, as well as comment reply notification. No, comment notification and comment reply notification. So we've got those two things. We've got that to talk about, and if we've got time, we're going to talk about titles, you know, what's in a title. Because titles are very important for your comic. It's the most important thing of any writing project is the title. Nothing else matters. Not the content. <laughs> well, before we get into that, I should get into the feature. So the feature was by me, and it was Demon Plague. Oh, that's it. It was Demon Plague. Yes. Okay. Here am I talking about Demon Plague. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ozone Ocean, and my feature for the week was Demon Plague. Explode into the fantasy world of Demon Plague, deep in the infernal regions of hell, where lava explodes out of the ground without warning and demons fight devils to the death. This is a dark world without mercy or respite. But one brave soul, Iago, might yet be able to prevail against it. Demon Plague is an exciting fantasy action-adventure story. The art is full-color and very detailed in stylized realism. I believe it's hand-drawn and inked with digital color. There are many pages. Well, there aren't many pages yet, so you can easily get into this one and start following it along. You'll be instantly hooked, I'm sure. This is a comic by Ben Steamroller. He's either the artist or the writer, I'm not sure. And it's rated T. It's very pro-looking work. Uh, Ashley Witter did the cover for it. She's the artist and creator behind uh, comics such as um, Scorch and uh, Squarriors. That's a one she's very famous for. And uh, just recently, Cigarettes and Carrot Juice. So yeah, she, cover artist. Um, the other uh, comicers, I'm not sure about Ben Steamroll and um, whoever the artist is or whether he's the artist. But... Uh, Interesting, fun-looking work. Quite a feast for the eyes. Very pro-looking comic. Uh, nice and detailed, especially the uh, the city of hell, or the city in hell. I hope you like it. Anyway, um, yeah, rated T. Ben Steamroller. Have a look at Demon Plague. And that was our feature, Demon Plague. The the title I remembered with no help from anyone. Awesome fucking comic. It's it's very pretty, very pretty, yeah. uh, interesting work about demons. Very intense. Very intense. It's yeah, a mm -hmm. lot of demon torture and all sorts of uh, severe stuff. So get prepared and dive into that. Um, High drama. <laughs> that, am I right about that? Just, uh, more action adventure. All right. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> There is some suspense and some mystery. Like uh, you do start off with a few questions that aren't answered, then are promised to be what you learn if you follow the comic. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, it, it's one of those ones that you start off in the story, and then you go, "Let's back up a few steps," and so then you have to, you know, get that flashback and then flash forward and 
all that kind of stuff. So, yes. But you wondered how I got in the situation. (laughs) (laughs) That's word for word. That's what the character says. Yeah. (laughs) The music this week was a theme to Holy Bible Albino Ginger Version. So Jonas has given us that, and it's beautiful. It's a it's a lovely little track. I'll just describe it for you. This week, Jonas has given us the theme to Holy Bible, the Albino Ginger Version. Wander into the giant cathedral of our Lord, the revered and sacred Albino Ginger. Watch the dust motes dance in the multicolored sunbeams, tinted into rainbow shades by stained glass windows depicting the mighty feats of the Albino Ginger God as he was creating our world. This is techno trance church music for a new age. So take it away, Gum Wallace. <laughs> Our music by Gum Wallace. Thank you very much for that, uh, Gum Wallace. Uh, albino or albino ginger, uh, holy Bible stuff. So, yeah, drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> Dances <laughs> very um, on the on the sp- uh, a fantastic remark by Tans. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's Johnny. Nobody would ever with that remark. <laughs> yeah, nobody would ever. Mac in that context ever. So. <laughs> <laughs> the meat has slowed my brain a little. Um, so we're talking <laughs> about the comments reply feature. Okay, have you guys had a chance to to test this out at all? Yeah, I got yes. one comic once, and then I went. To see <laughs> it. Now I can't figure out how to go see it again. <laughs> You'll never will. You'll be lost in the labyrinth forever. You'll end up at death porn where everyone <laughs> ends up, and that'll be the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the comment reply feature. This was something we, uh, you know, raised a lot of money for, and uh, indeed, we had uh, our albino ginger on the crackcast last week because he helped us raise quite a bit of money, um, which is fantastic, and. We finally got it, at least in the prototype stage. What we wanted people to do is is test it out. We know it it, it works, you know. Well, I've I've tested it myself, and um, I've done the sort of the breaking things on it, so uh, I know it really. It's hard to break. I don't know if it does now, but uh, it's the main thing we want to test is usability. You know, how much sense does it make? Um, is it understandable? All that kind of thing. So. That's what we want people to tell us about more than anything else. Not just, you know, whether it works or not, but, you know, whether they like it, whether it's what you expect. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we're happy to have that on the site. Um, Baines, you said it would work uh, all right on a phone? Uh, yeah, I just tried it out in the phone, on the phone, and uh, it's, it worked well. Are the replies and comments two different 
links are going to be? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're two different parts. So you'll notice in your user um, control panel there, you got the little tabs on the top, the little tiny things. You know, I mean, even, yeah. is he, is that even understandable? Should it be all part of the same interface? Maybe. No, I uh, think it's fine that you can separate because you go for different things yeah. in these two tabs, like. Uh, comments that you have received it's, uh, you go to see who has been kind enough and supportive enough to support your comic by leaving comments and everything and and then in the replies you want to see who has replied to your trolling so it's different stuff that you want yeah it works for me mm-hmm. That's it's nice it's nice and neat and separated into different compartments. I mean, it, it, it panders to my personal neat freakishness. So <laughs> she needs to keep it. Se- she needs to keep it separated. <laughs> yeah. Sing us the rest of the song, Vince. <laughs> hey! That's all I know. I don't know the other. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Um. Yeah, it's one thing I found confusing. You know, I okay. I'll, I'm going to tell you guys when I um was pro, you know, like a p- planning this out and saying, okay, now Alexi, this is how I want it to look. It, want, it has to go this way, this way, this way. This is my thinking behind it. I said, okay, for for comments, all we want is a link and just telling us what page it's on because I want people to actually go and look. At the comments they have rather than have it on you know a big list so i want them to go and look at the page where the comments are and for the comment replies i want them to see their own reply i mean i wanted them to see their own comment so they know what people are replying to and then when they click on that then they go and see look at their reply and that was my thinking behind it which you know totally made sense to me and alexi thinks that's a great idea um but when I look at it now and I just see all, you know, one big page of all my comments and it says, you know, such and such has replied to this, it's uh, it, intellectually, it, it's confusing to me. I look at it and think I'd rather look at what their comment was rather than my comment was. I don't know. I w- really need other people's thoughts on this. Like when you yeah, have a row see, of like a hundred, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, I, I can agree with you. Like, cause I just opened it up and I looked at um, some of, some of my comments I'd received and it was just kind of like a list that I didn't have any context for, except for the page numbers that they were on and whether they were new or not. And I kind of, I don't know, it was kind of overwhelming. Um, so yeah, it, it it'd be nice to see part of the of the comments. I I don't really see why you shouldn't be able to. So you you're talking about just the the comment list rather than the comment replies. Yeah, I think that's a good idea too. So maybe mm-hmm. the instead of just having a link for the comments, we should have like I don't know, maybe the first four words or something like that or the first like maybe just the first line because i mean you have like under it you have like this this strip of like like blue or gray or whatever the hell it is just the first line that fits within that bracket you know yeah i'm just writing that down now first line of comments on page yeah um that's a good idea so you get a bit of a preview that way it's not totally just a blank list of comment link comment link comment link comment link so and then that first line would be clickable just like the banner exactly read more basically zip on over there and reply to the reply if you want to or, or read the whole thing if it's long so but so pitt's just talking about the comments rather than the comment reply but for the comment reply, 
I don't probably you guys haven't tested that out enough yet. So um well it's the same uh, it could be the same principle, you know, you could make it uh, like see the first line of the uh, reply instead yeah, of having so your own comment click on right? over comment if you want. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Cuz it's yeah. your own comment at the at the moment. But still, it it could be from a, a you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it could be neat to be able to see the reply right there, if uh, you know, if that's doable. I'll ask Lexi to to perhaps do that, and you know, we'll look we'll look for more comments from people as well. So maybe they like it the way it is or whatever. But um, I reckon that would be a better idea, better way to manage it. Oh, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, so you, basically, too many changes to something like this means money. So that's the <laughs> sort of thing. But I think if if you are going to change anything, I mean, yeah, you have to be careful about how much you do change. But I think if you're going to change anything, it's best to catch this stuff and at least in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, like we're doing now. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's prototyping. I don't want to just come up to Lex and say, "Look, we want this change and this change," and then you know, the next day, no, it was better the way it was before. You know, and then you say, "No, we want it this way instead." And yeah, so we'll we'll sort of um, get everyone's ideas and. Um, Poor Alexi's moving a piano back and forth. Exactly. She belongs to the dump yeah. now. <laughs> Sort of, we'll, we'll, we'll get everyone's ideas together, and then we'll say, um, "All right, so this and this and this and this." And if you need some extra money, well, yeah, we did budget for just a little bit of extra, so we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah, if it is extra, we'll, uh, we'll see what it is, and we'll go from there. Yeah, exactly. Um, Alexi's a pretty good guy and you know he um, he's as much a drunk ducker now as everybody else he wasn't he wasn't even into comics before drunk duck and uh, he just became on board and now he is a member of the site along with everyone else and he loves awesome. drunk duck so we gained a new fan <laughs> yeah. so he's one of us Baines you're disappearing uh, disappearing yeah your voice is getting quiet I wasn't talking, but it, uh, it's quiet. Is, is uh, quiet for it doesn't sound else? any different to me. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe my level. Hello. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. He's like, hello. Hello. <laughs> I, I feel strongly about the comment situation. <laughs> it's Bane's luster. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy. No question about that, I don't think. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. <laughs> Everybody be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, okay. The the comment notification stuff's there, and I want people to check it out and uh, tell us what you think and how it should be, how it should look. Okay. Well, we might as well move on then and talk about the, the same my name thing. So this is, was your... Um, uh, post about titles bands yes titles always be titling that's what i say you're entitled to your title exactly yeah and to continue the glengarry glen ross motif <laughs> i can't believe you remember so much from that bloody tv movie <laughs> <laughs> i need the titles not this <laughs> Glen Gary titles. <laughs> oh, jeez. I have to watch that. Uh, yeah. Again. Uh, titles are really important. I mean, you have your, in, in the world of comics and book covers, of course, movie Everything. posters, you have an image. But uh, yeah, I guess I was kind of talking about the title itself, how that can grab you um, or not, and how it can kind of give you a suggestion of uh, what you're going to read and uh, whatever else I said in that post. What did I say? <laughs> Bottom line, just read the post and come back. And... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of different ways of doing a title. So you could do like a joke title, a pun, 
which are really annoying and piss people off. Um, it, 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 pun titles are good for, you know, five minutes and then you get bored of them and you start to hate them. So it's not really a good idea. Um, there's a... Yes, that's a risky one. That can be like kind of funny the first time and then uh, yeah. gets less amusing the more you see it. Yeah. Exactly. There can be titles that are intriguing, so you um, give people a bit of a story in the title. Those can be really uh, interesting. You want to find out, what does this title mean? No. It could even be a really long title about a bit of a story about a man and his adventures. The man who went up a mountain... Uh, went up a hill and came down the mountain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back, back in the old days, that's what <laughs> titles used to be. We'd have, we have like short, like maybe Sherlock Holmes now, you know, say uh, Sherlock Holmes and the Hound of the Basketballs or whatever. But back in the day, those kind of books would have a short title, Sherlock Holmes and the Hound of the Basketballs, and then it would have like a colon, and then you'd have the rest of the title afterwards. Concerning right. the adventures of a man who did this and this and this and this, and that would be the full title. The full title would like be two sentences long or something. Oh, okay, that's neat, actually. Yeah, yeah that's what they all did back then. It because they didn't have like uh, you know that on the back of the book that you have a blurb or something like we do in these days or on the inside yeah. cover. So they had to grab people another way. So that was a different way of doing titles. So you could do that with your comic as well. Actually, that would be neat. Not for every single comic, of course, but for the right comic, I could see uh, someone resurrecting that. Uh, yeah, it's especially if you're doing, that say, I'll go on time. A very fun. That would be a very fun URL to type. You know, www dot this this and that that did this and this and that and that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you better remember all of it. Otherwise. Yeah. In the right <laughs> You'll order. never get it. You know, never find it. <laughs> it's only for the, the most special people are allowed to find it. And, and, you know, that reminds me, speaking of titles, that finding a title was more important for Hitler, uh, I think his book, than it was actually the content of the book. And originally, the, the story goes, uh, according to his biography anyway, that the original title that he had come up with was three lines long, um, something like uh, the story of my doubling into politics and doing this and this and that and blah, 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 whatever. I, I, cannot, I can never remember it by heart. <laughs> I... You won't be able to find the website then, Times. Yeah. That was the, his original... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, and then his editor, who I think was assigned to him by the party or whoever, I mean, because he did have, like, his entire political network already arranged by the time that he was uh, in the slammer writing and being all posh about it and hipster. And um, <laughs> said, uh, you know what, this is not going to be able to cut it. It's uh, Nobody's going to to be interested in even picking up this book. So may I change something? And he did change everything. Like he slashed the entire the entire title and he just wrote my mind camp. And and that was the title. He didn't actually come up with the title of his own book. That oh, was the idea. Cool. Yeah. That's that's and, an and story. I heard that, that the original sense. title for was a uh, sleepaway camp. Is that true? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> it was a shock yeah. again. Yeah. That is uh, very important. It, uh, it was uh, his sojourn in, in Crystal Lake and, and how he stayed there. <laughs> <That's wife>. right. <laughs> oh, God, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> No, any jokes made on that theme lead to very dark places. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's the sort of, uh, I don't know how true this is, but I think Steven Spielberg himself said it, that he was in a, um, a movie studio or whatever in a producer's office and there was a pile of scripts on the desk and he looked down and saw just a blank title page and said Jaws on it. Mm. And he didn't know of the book. Oh. Um, 
and he was like, it caught his eye, and he was like, what's that? Oh, right. So uh, he, he, I was thinking, oh, he saw Jaws on a page and thought, wow, that'd be a good idea for a movie. And but, yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was already a book, but I guess yeah, they optioned guess. the script, but I don't know if anyone was going to. Yeah, the title. You know, they didn't uh, have a director. Brought him to the book, yeah. Right. That's a good, yeah, one word titles are, are very good. Yeah, like you've got listed here, Jaws, Tremors, Scream. They can be exciting. Predator. <laughs> Terminator. There, I mean, there's a reason they, yeah, they, <laughs> they, they can be very striking, very, yeah, uh, especially if, uh, if if that single word encompasses either theme or the main issue of the plot, yeah. then that stays with yeah. the audience. Yeah. yeah. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That was a, a, a more <laughs> complex title, but that was based on the old um, serials or adventure stories or, you know, going Yeah, back because to there was, there's a few Indiana Jones stories. And so when you add those little things on the end of it, because all the, all the Indiana Jones movies had the – or specific subtitle. So Indiana Jones was the main title, and then the subtitle was yeah the rest of it. Exactly. Basically, it was an exactly adventure like, of Indiana. Yeah, and like Harry Potter, Harry Potter, and and the, oh my God, yeah. the I never know. <laughs> of Azkaban. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Harry because Potter basically, and the Potted main character. Story. In his adventures, so it's this character in that adventure, this character in that adventure. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. right. so. so uh, when they were coming up with the the Indiana Jones one, they were specifically kind of uh, trying to um to reference the stories that it was based on because Indiana Jones, of course, is a, um a pastiche of nineteen thirties adventure stories, so, and that's how they did it. Mm-hmm. You know. Flash Gordon and the Mud Men of Mars, you know, whatever. Right. Andy Although Mark Raiders, I know one. If we have a commenter who listens to this show, they'll probably someone will mention that Raiders of the Lost Ark initially was just Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is an odd title, and later they changed it to Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. When he became which a franchise, a... they changed it. The yeah, well, yeah. At some point, he decided to alter the title. Well, yeah, if we're talking about altering titles and Lucasfilms, there's no worse example than the film that used to be known as Star Wars and is now known by all these dickheads as A New Hope. (laughs) It was Star Wars back in the day. It's not A New Hope. Yeah, at the the time it was just... Even worse, Episode (laughs) 4. It's not Episode 4, you idiot. It was just called Star Wars. you know... For clarity, I mean, you have to admit, <laughs> you have to call it something after all this time or people wouldn't know. What call it Star about. Wars. That's what you call it. I well, like change, that, like Pitt said. Yeah. The franchise name is Star Wars, though. I think it would be exactly. more yeah. confusing to... Confusing to eat. You're just, yeah, you're now... just a purist, Oz. You're just a purist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now when you say Star... I mean, you're right, though. It was done on purpose. But like now when you say Star Wars, it just it's just the... The overall, it's just like the, if you're confused, the then then bugger off. You're not you're not uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the kitty table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's that, that's a rant. The title that that can be construed to mean different things and applies no matter which way you cut it in different uh, situations of within the narrative work. Like if you take uh, Les Miserables, like who are the miserable ones? Oh. Are they the are they the ones that are in the gutter, or are they the ones that uh, make sure that they stay there? Yeah, and, and so on and so on. Exactly. So it makes you think and try to analyze what you read more, just to be able to apply the title, which That's... is also memory. It's good, yeah. There can be things you read all the way through and you think, um, where does this title apply? Some even you read through and think, this title is uh, unfair. This title is uh, false advertising because it applies to nothing in this book at all. That happens with a lot of manga titles. (laughs) Mm. 
tit girls from outer space. There's no tit girls in this. I look red and all the way through. Where are they? <laughs> I feel cheated. Like, there, are, there are a couple, like for example, the the series that I finished today and had me beers and everything. It's called Return, and and you just wait throughout the series to see who returns where because there is nobody, literally nobody, nobody returning anywhere. Oh, from anywhere. It should be called Exodus. But, <laughs> but nobody is, is getting out of anywhere either. So, there's that. <laughs> but in the end, what you realize is that the title, the title is a particular show that was called that way. And, and the main character uses that show to bring uh, to bring this uh, huge revenge, revenge plan, crashing down on on those that she has been uh, targeting in a very specific mm-hmm. manner, and so and then what you had in order to understand the title, actually understand the title, you have to to watch the last episode, and then it all clicks, and it 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 feels like the perfect thing, like the cherry on top yeah. this time. But only if you have seen the last episode. Uh, until then, you don't really know why it's called that way. Oh, that's oh, tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. the title Sometimes can be very um, uh, pivotal, a pivotal in the story. Yeah. It's rare that happens, though. But it's, it's yeah, and, and it's very tricky. Like It's a double-edged knife. If it doesn't work, it's stupid. Uh, <laughs> So it's a, you know, pass or fail on that one. <laughs> what about the the movies where, um, or books or whatever, where a character actually says the titular line? Mm. What do you guys think of that? Do you think that's a bit hackneyed or a bit try hard? I'm trying to think of a good, ex- the one example that comes immediately to mind is this movie, Mystery Science Theater featured it. That's how I know it. It's called I Accuse My Parents. And in the first scene of the movie, the kid in, is in court. He's in, been tried with all these crimes. He says, I accuse my parents. And they, the Mystery Science Theater characters go crazy. Like, we have a title. We have a title. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, jeez. Oh. I mean, it can be a little bit forced, but it, it kind of makes me smile, too. Because I, I tend, and this can go the other way, but I tend not to take what I'm watching as seriously. Mm. Um, so it can work better. Like if I was watching something that was supposed to be super serious, like, I don't know, like some uh, like Schindler's list or something. If there was a line where <laughs> oh, somebody man. got up and like, this must be <laughs> Schindler's <laughs> list. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I, I, I will not, uh, like, I'm not uh, going to put my hand on the fire over this but I do think that towards the end they do mention. <laughs> really? I've but, never seen uh, it. I'm not I, mean, very... I can see why it would happen, but um, because you know, it's not something it necessarily be something. The, whole, the, the, whole, the entire idea is him compiling this huge list. So it, I yeah. think I think if I remember right, because I haven't managed to watch the second time. I watched it once, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that they mention it, and and there is this amazing last scene where he he monologues basically about the list, and I think they don't actually mention it, like okay. the Schindler's list or his his uh, you know blah blah. But but the way that he mentions it <laughs> with a musical sting right after he says it. yeah, <laughs> um, and and it does make you a little bit like. Does make you shiver just a little bit. Oh, so it's effective. Yeah. Okay. It so works. It's not a cringe thing. Okay. Cool. No. It comes Probably naturally. In dialogue. It, it comes mm. naturally. Especially Sophie's choice yeah, as yeah. well had the mention of the title in the in the script. Sophie's choice is a terrible. It's a it's a brilliant terrible movie. Don't watch yeah. it if you want. I do. Well, Watch it, it if you want, if you have a stomach for something really uh, nasty that will not didn't help it, you. It, it become <laughs> the title of Sophie's Choice? Didn't that become like 
uh, into the part of the language. Yeah, yeah. The, the language. I so. Like I know the phrase and not the and in the movie the actual the way it's put is like what is I don't want to have to make some kind of Sophie's choice. I know. I I love it when people pull that out of their back pocket. It makes me laugh every time because it's always so ridiculous. I, I try to use it as often as possible. Like, <laughs> like, like, oh, which doll do you want to go to the bathroom? I don't know, man. I'm having a real Sophie's choice right now. Like, <laughs> okay. What would you like in your coffee? What is this? Have to be some kind of. Yeah. It has to be either this or that. Can't be more than two choices. Has to be two ah, choices. Gotcha, I gotcha. Cream, sugar, coffee. Yes. Right. There you go. Choose. Paper, paper, or plastic. <laughs> who, who asks that anymore? That's what I, yeah. Or the, the can be like a title that you know exactly what it refers to. You don't need like an analysis to apply uh, to apply it, and nobody and still nobody mentions it. But it does give you an insight on the author's take on the entire plot yeah. and what happened. Mm. And, and I'm thinking one uh, story, science fiction. Generally, I'm not a huge fan of science fiction, but this one is one of my favorite books in general. Uh, and it's called The Gods of Foxcroft. And you never. There are no gods mentioned in the entire in the entire uh, book. It is a book by David Levy or Levy. I don't know how he's pronounced. Um, and it is about this uh, medical slash uh, corporate scientific conglomeration uh, the conglomerate thing that uh, takes people and cryogenically preserves them until such uh, medical advances have been made that their uh, uh, incurable disease has become curable. So we follow this character that signs this contract with them and, and then he wakes up and he doesn't really know how much time has passed and eventually we realize that it's probably something like half a millennium uh-huh. or more than that. And um, and this this uh, company, which is called Foxcroft, is the one that controls life and death. So the, they are the gods of Foxcroft. Oh, I but see. The way, but the, yeah, the, and, and the way that the, you come to discover this, because you don't actually discover this until well into the second half of the story, um, it is extremely sinister. It makes you feel very, very uh, intimidated as a reader, and and the title makes it more intimidating. Exactly because they are called the gods of Foxcroft, and you realize that oh my god, they actually are gods. They are acting like gods. They think as a god would think, and they can do what a god can but do. But it's not stated in the text. That's only in the title. No, never, yeah. never in the text. So that's um, interesting. That oh, gives you a, that gives you a particular reading of the book that you might not have had if they hadn't exactly. had put that in the title. Yeah, if it was the the adventures of I think his name was Frank or Fred, something like that. I mean, adventures I said, of Fred, <laughs> cryogenic Fred, and he's <laughs> frozen uh, Fred. Fred the hell. It wouldn't have the same impact, although it would be the exact same. Book. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. That's that's a good point. Yeah, because um, these titles are like are like covers, and that like we were saying before, that it uh, sets you up for your expectations for the tone of the story. I think more mm-hmm. than anything, um, if it's kind of a silly title, you're going to expect something kind of silly, and it's going to shade the way you read those first lines and go into it. You know. Um, if it's something serious or ominous, uh, ominous or, or, you know, or, or thought provoking, it's going to get you set up because uh, t- to, to see it in a certain way, to give it a certain reading. You know, I mean, people say you can't judge a book by its cover, but you, you do. You do. You, you have to, you know. Um, it attracts your attention. It's, it's like the face. 
of a person. Yeah, more or less. absolutely. Because you want to know what you're investing your interest in. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's you know usually it's the first thing you see of a book if you're looking at, at titles in a bookshelf. You only see the spine, and you see the title, and that will intrigue you or turn you off or whatever or you know yeah encourage you to even them. even if we want to talk about uh, another aspect of titles it's not just the words used but even the font or their positioning hmm. on the page you know you mentioned the spine and that that opens up a whole other can of worms i mean a title says a lot really yes definitely i was just thinking um uh going back to the star wars again so that um Back when that film was just called Star Wars, that wouldn't have worked if it was called A New Hope or Episode Four. It just would have wouldn't have wouldn't have worked. And that that was called Star Wars for us, you know, like referencing uh, you know older adventure style stuff. And but it was given a specific font, like Pip was just talking about there. So that had a very striking specific font. Yeah. things didn't have before and then that became like a you know there are things like you know they created a whole font based around that star wars font mm-hmm. and that gave you a particular reading of the thing and and no one mentioned star wars in star wars which is a good thing because that would be terribly hackneyed um so there's no titular <laughs> line thank christ i think you don't even mention the word war the word the war no not at all and but that that gives you a particular reading of that um you're approaching it expecting star wars you know war of the stars all that kind of stuff but say back then when you know all the other prequels and all that bullshit you know the the sequels didn't exist um if it was called a new hope i don't think anyone would have gone out to see it it doesn't really suggest <laughs> yeah I think it would what have that failed at all, does it? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. You don't really know what to expect. A new hope of what? I mean, it makes it sound like a sequel. Yeah, you know, to what? Yeah. what? Exactly. Yeah. Whereas it was, it sounds book. like a drama. It sounds like some a kind short, of pithy title. Chariots of Fire type movie. Star Wars. You think, mm-hmm. oh my god, this thing sounds like a space opera. It's going to be cool because <laughs> we like sounds war and we like stars. <laughs> That reminds me of um, um, there was this uh, German series that came out that I watched um, during my German studies um, back in the old community college. No, this was it. No, this was in. I say, never mind. That's not important. Um, but uh, um, <laughs> forgive my tangents. Um, but, uh, there, there was this um, this multi part kind of like made for tv movie i mean it was really good um but uh it, in, in german it was called uh unser mutter unser vater our our mothers our fathers um and it was about uh i've, I've had tange watch it with me <laughs> she she volunteered to watch it with me um <laughs> she knows what i'm talking about but um but it, it was really I would good it was about yeah yeah um it was about uh it, it took place in World War two and um it was about these four friends uh in Berlin it starts off in Berlin and it starts at the beginning of the war and you have this one dude uh one of the friends is this uh Jewish son of a tailor you son of a tailor <laughs> and um and then he's got this sexy kind of uh spirited girlfriend who's going into acting. And then, um, or five friends. Uh, then there's these two brothers who are both going off to the war. And um, then there's uh, this one girl who is is very kind of uh, um, good natured who who ends up going off to become a nurse. And so they all kind of divulge off. And towards the end, uh, it, it's the things that happen and who meets up at the end and stuff. But anyway, so the title, uh, "Our Mothers, Our Fathers." Uh, it it alludes to a German audience. You know, this this is about the people who came before us and who were in the situation. Now, when that came over to the States and when it got, um, uh, maybe probably not just the States, but uh, to an English-speaking audience, a different foreign audience outside of Germany, it got translated to Generation War became the title. It was no longer... Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. 
yeah so um so that's kind of an interesting way that that titles can does, be they, they don't translate specific. yeah yeah so you you have to actually change the meaning of it in order to um to resonate with different community the same way as it you know as it is intended to resonate that actually makes me jump to another type of title that tricks you like it, it's sort of a not exactly a bait and switch because it doesn't tr trick you that much but it lures you in with an expectation of something that might not be exactly what you get but by the time you realize it, it's too late <laughs> um and tit girls from outer space <laughs> yeah <laughs> You, you should ask for your money back. <laughs> My imaginary money from that imaginary book. <laughs> um, so I remember there was this uh, there was this book, and and now I realize, like I realized that a couple of days ago, that oh my god, I actually am very influenced from that book. Um, that I haven't I hadn't even thought about for a while, for a long long while. Anyway, he, the title goes. The direct translation would be. Peter's long walk or long promenade, let's say. Okay. Um, and it, it, it's, it's marketed, and that I think is a very bastard move <laughs> as a children's book. It's not. So, and you got, uh, you know, the cover on the cover, you got this boy uh, dressed very nicely in his very nice uh, 40s uh, vest and shirt and everything and very well groomed and everything and he is walking on a road so okay you pick it up and you expect you know to read the children's book about or a, a, you know all the children's book about this boy that has an adventure and they, the boy does have an ad adventure but <laughs> it completely rips you a new one Okay. Because <laughs> he literally goes from street A to street B, and it's not at all very long. But from the the, the entire the entire book is about him having to to make this run a couple of times, and every time he sees certain things along the way because it's uh, during the German occupation of Athens, so he sees and witnesses different. Uh, historical occurrences that are taking place before him as he makes these errands, this errand run. Yeah. Um, and it's traumatic as, as hell uh, to read through. And, and the entire point of the title is that it is the long run because by the time he finishes making these runs in a very specific manner, he has become, from a boy, he has become a man, although he hasn't even... Uh, you know, it's not even, he hasn't grown up like a... Yeah, um, yeah, he hasn't grown up biologically. A month or so, yeah. So he has. Yeah, so that's why it's his long run. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, and then you are very, very angry at that. <laughs> 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 and then, exactly. I remember that. I, I remember uh, it's it's one of the books that made me cry so much. And, uh, the, the main kid doesn't die in the end, by the way. So, but it's not about him. But um, he, um, I remember it completely traumatized me as a child <laughs> reading this, um, and I forgot about it. It, it. it hurt me so much that I forgot about this book until very recently. Yeah, you're having flashbacks. <laughs> no, but like it just it just uh, occurred like the the title actually came to my mind. Oh. I said, "Oh my god!" The associations with the title, yeah, yeah, and and I said, "Oh wow, oh wow!" <laughs> that's like uh -huh. that's and, and and now I can see a lot of of similarities uh, in without moonlight that came from that book uh, yeah. and the impressions that I had from that book. Um, which, by the way, was from a guy that was a child at the time. So that's, <laughs> that's also that. 
Um, yeah. So there's that kind of title. Yeah. Tours you in yeah. with a different expectation, and and then it is a fitting title, but it's it refers to something completely different than what what you assume reading. I like a good title that is interpretive, so you have to actually work out what it means. Um, so this is another kind of title. Um, go when you mentioned uh, it, a uh, thing that had influenced your work. I was thinking, um, what what have been my influences? Uh, so Ghost in the Shell was something that influenced Pinky TA, and when you read Ghost in the Shell. What does that mean? It's not sort of referenced in the manga or the anime or the or any of the properties about it. Maybe the new movie, because that's a piece of crap. But uh, we won't go there. Um, but the... you're going to make Charlotte Johansson cry again, Oz. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be crying into her mountains of money and <laughs> and her her non-expression to crying. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> blank face. Uh, but so go, ghost in the shell that is um that is an expression ghost that comes from ghost in the machine uh, yeah. which means um perhaps there's some kind of spirit you know uh making this thing go you know it means uh what, what's causing this thing to function weirdly <laughs> as i yeah think it. Oh. But, yeah it, it's funny you mentioned that oh i'm sorry no no go on I was going to say, I, because I remember when I first um, sat down to watch Ghost in the Shell the first time, uh, and for, for some years after that, because uh, I'd watched it back in high school, um, and I didn't know what that phrase meant. I hadn't heard it before then, um, or that or Ghost in the Machine. I didn't, I had no context for what it meant, so then I watched it, and at first I, I took it literally is like meeting like the puppet master or something like oh it's kind of cool and, and and it could mean that it could be alluding to but it's it's it, it's yeah. it's about it the overall um experience of ghost in the shell you know um not to put too fine of a point on it i don't think that's a very fine point i think that's a very broad broad meaning to the movie you know it's it's uh kusanagi's experience of coming into this this new not a revelation because she doesn't formally make that yeah. conclusion like oh there is something in there but it's her starting to wonder and and um explore that that possibility yeah. but so ever since um uh Whenever I hear that phrase, I do I do like it uh, quite a lot. Not just because of Ghost in the Shell, but because, um, well, not I should say not just because I like Ghost in the Shell, but because of what a deep, rich meaning that movie gave that concept. Like yeah. when I hear the Ghost in the Machine, that that phrase pops up in my head so many times now throughout the course of no, not a day, but uh, often enough that like if my computer you know, if I'm on my computer and for whatever reason, you know, I'm doing something that I always do and all of a sudden the screen seizes up or does something that it doesn't usually do, something in the back of my mind goes, oh, the ghost in the machine, you know? <laughs> and so, like, that that came and that <laughs> stuck with me because of that movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's, it's very evocative. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, for, for Kusanagi, how I take it to mean is that... Um, they they refer to it a lot now in in the more modern kind of um, uh, iterations of Ghost in the Shell, like in the series. A ghost is um, a person's soul or a, a person's um, essence. Essence, mm -hmm. yeah. James, you give up the ghost, don't you? <laughs> yeah. But uh, the the idea of shell is, um, you know this ghost isn't bound by anything really it just happens to be encased in a shell mm. but kusanagi finds that she's not bound by the shell anymore and she her ghost escapes that and you know blends with the entirety of you know the human network in the end yeah yeah I, that was a pretty amazing kind of thing i like that 
The nest, is, the nest, the net is vast and infinite. She says. <laughs> I think about that line a lot. Yeah, yeah. I like it. It's beautiful. I'm actually <laughs> how, guys, how did you think uh, about your own titles? Um, do you think they have any layers or whatever? Well, my my title is as simple as it can possibly be. Initially, you know, it, it has gathered layers like a um a pearl. <laughs> but initially the grain of, of grit was the fact that her hair was pink, so I called it Pinky, and TA was because this annoying art teacher just thought, oh, your work's just all TNA. So I thought, yep, I'm going to do my work. <laughs> yeah, really? I didn't know that. That's funny. I'm going to have that like as the logo. That's, that's going to be a big thing. So that was you a big F-U all TNA. To, I, I should have it. called it Pinky F-U. But, uh... <laughs> I'm glad you let go of the hostility. Yeah. yeah. I think you own it now, don't you? You, you know your work instead, is man. TNA. Exactly. But now, now it's like TA is has become like you know that could mean anything, and that became her initial. So her name isn't Pinky, of course. That's her um, nom de plume or nom de guerre. But her real name is like oh. Tatiana Ananova, so it's Pinky TA. But TA can also mean all sorts of other things that I just decide awesome. <laughs> it can mean. Teacher's assistant. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's where that's where I thought he was gonna go with it. Yeah, but, me too. Uh, he's, sure. he's like, oh, this, he's, he's making a dedication to the teacher's assistant. Oh, how nice! <laughs> I, I always thought it's an ass. That's kind of nice. <laughs> uh, that could be to make uh, to make all the audience feel bad about themselves because they would all think you know it's an ass, and it's like no, 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 <laughs> don't do that. No, you crude imaginations. No, it's so much more advanced than that. No, no. This is this is a pure work, and Picky's a pure girl. Damn it! Yeah. Can't you see that? Jeez. I worked so hard to make it look as a pure. Exactly. So, yeah. What what about your guys' titles? I think we've talked about mm. them before, sort of. I think so. Did we? I mean, like. Baines has mentioned typical strange is um, so you're taking a contrasting terms. I think it was, wasn't it, Baines? So you got yes. It's two. What I landed on. I spent a ton of time trying to think of a title, man. Like I racked my brain for weeks. It's hard. Of, uh, what title I wanted? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, to have a, the right vibe and something different. Um, the title originally was based on a song. Like I'd written a song, and um, it was called Oblivion. And at the same time, I was sort of creating these characters. And I thought, oh, and my a friend of mine said, like, we'll just call it Oblivion, and that'll be the theme song. You know, you play that at the beginning because it was an animated yeah. thing at first. And um, I was like, yeah, it's, but it, I just realized that, that was a terrible title, and I, I wanted to get away from it. Really it doesn't, fit it. it doesn't really fit it exactly. And then I looked it up online finally, and there's like five or six things called Oblivion movies. Everybody thinks stuff. they're they're super edgy Oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I, I just kind of played around with terms. And I, like I said, I eventually thought I want contrasting, just contrasting words that sounded interesting to me. Eventually. That, yeah, yeah. It automatically grabs your attention, like contrasting colors, you know, um, blue and orange, yeah. the most used colors for movie um, posters. Oh. <laughs> you used contrasting colors in it. Oh, works. yeah. Grabs your attention, yeah. yeah. Um, they catch their eyes. But what Bain suggested, the uh, <laughs> oblivion used by like, you know, three or four different things, that's another important thing. You have a unique combination of words makes you stand out. I mean, without moonlight is, it has a meaning, but it's not really used very often. Um, and putrid meat as well. It's quite a yeah. unique kind of thing. I mean, it's used in its uh, functional sense, but it's... <laughs> you know, not not used as, as for a comic very often. Or and brave all. resistance as well gives a gives a feeling. It definitely gives a vibe, and it's not a phrase you you hear in everyday life. Yeah, it definitely gives you like a, an emotional something. You know, there's something there. It grabs it you. Yeah. Gotcha. Grabs you by the balls. I mean, uh, bottomless waitress <laughs> was a comic based on the title. 
<laughs> That's when, right. Uh, we had the title first. We're just joking <laughs> around. And then I was just like, let's I do like the comic. Talk. I was like, really? <laughs> I like that concept, though, man. I mean, it seems like such an open way to experiment with an idea just like coming up and I think that's the way that, that other people a lot of other people probably work too like they come up with that one two sentence idea and say like well where can I go from here with it you know it, nobody starts off with a fully fleshed out idea like all right this happens and then this happens <laughs> and 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 this is the world and this is the setting and then this fully beautifully developed idea that just comes bounding out of your head like like Athena out of Zeus but um you know it's it's more often I think more like um that you know just coming up with a, a simple sentence and why not make that sentence your title I don't know. yeah concept do it. that's a way of doing it a lot of movies and tv shows are done that way they're a pitch that says a title and nothing else and then someone will just give an outline based on the yeah. title just to intrigue that was done, the people done in movies a ton in the back in the 80s apparently the days of like speculative speculative uh, scripts you know yeah. like uh, the idea would all be in the title it would all be a you know, stop or my mom will shoot <laughs> like it's all there in the title but the cop's mother you know? <laughs> like already used in country songs and other kinds of songs like those, there are titles and that's the whole concept and then you kind of write something around that yeah. yeah. I, you know, earlier I kind of ragged on um, uh, manga titles and how a lot of times the, the words have nothing to do with what's in the story. But I, yeah, I revoke that. I take that back partially because that's exactly what I did with Future Meat. But like, it, it, the important thing is, is getting the idea across, getting the tone or the vibe. Or sometimes you can even use it to like, um, as, as we said before, you know, trick people into thinking that they're reading something specific, like uh, something really, um, really popular right now in, in gaming is Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, that game on Steam, I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. Um, I, I won't no, get too no. much into it just in case of spoilers. Um, check out some Let's Plays of it, though. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, the Doki Doki Literature Club is, I mean, you hear a word like Doki Doki, it, what's that sound like to you like it's kind of like oh like you know kind of quirky maybe or kind of silly yeah yeah so it's not something that you typically take seriously and and as it starts off um it's exactly what it sounds like but as it goes on it kind of becomes something different and so um okay. the title sets you up to think that uh there you're going in something else. I, I never mind that. Like drunk a duck. Yes. What do well, we expect is. from drunk duck? Drunk ducks? I don't know. It's probably not web comics. No. Whenever, <laughs> whenever I tell someone like, "Oh, you can go read my comic at uh, drunk duck or the duck dot com," and they're, like, I, I always get this look like, "The you duck? sure? The ducks? Yeah. Why? Ornithological? Could... What the hell?" <laughs> Is this a fetish site? What are you doing, dude? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's a fetish site, too. <laughs> Comic fetish. What about I did. Oh, go oh. no, no, you go. No, no, I had you. Oh, no. had me. Okay. Um, no, I'm, I was saying that I think that a way to to feel reassured when you are coming up with a title that it is a title that will work for you at least whatever that means is that yeah. the more that you work the story the more it feels that the title feels that it, it connects like things fall into place that maybe you hadn't considered when you came up with a title or, or stuff happens that link back to it more and things like that and um, I, I do think that if if the title is suitable for the work that you are doing, it will grow with, although it won't be changing clearly, but it will grow with the work. Yeah. It will be more and more... Organic. Um, yes, thank you. That's what I was looking for. It gains, so. it gains levels, like with uh, Pinky Tia, yeah, it, uh, it does, which is a fun thing. 
it's it's lo- it's lovely to be able to to do that and say, yeah, no, nah, no, I I thought my own title meant this, but now I know that my now title it means, means that. Uh, you know, this and that and that and that and that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, it's true. Without moonlight's a good example that can mean so many literally leapers going when there's no moonlight because they need to work yeah. in darkness. Or... I always like that choice for a title. It's like a beautiful that. title, yeah. And oh, thank you. It can mean a lot more things, can't it? Yeah. And basically, the first time that I, I picked it was because of a, it is a line in a very uh, iconic Greek song. Uh, you know, that it, it, it grew dark without the moon. So it's, you know, it doesn't have any moonlight. Oh. But now I think that. It feels, I mean, for me, it resonates more because when there is no moonlight, the the night is very, very dark and there is no hope yeah. out there because there is no moonlight. And There's no things... light, not even moonlight. Yeah, so that's the whole, whole of the comic. The tone is without moonlight. We're in the dark, deep black gaze. So, yeah. so you know, now I'm thinking that the title of this uh, of the second arc of Without Moonlight should be, you know, Darkest Before Dawn or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> you want to direct people too literally, though. Maybe you'd call it yeah. like, like Penumbra. No, that's a... No, well, call it but, but if you do this, um, the, the genius in doing something like that is, so if you put it on a shelf next to something, this is another thing with titles, I, I know there's been a few bands that have done, taken this approach. Like, say you want your work put up on a shelf next to a pop, another popular work um, mm-hmm. just to have, like, the, the access. That, that's one of the reasons why um, in the heyday of metal, so many bands started with M because Metallica. Uh-huh. Um, oh. So that when they got <laughs> on the shelf, the M would be close, yeah. Wow. A lot of authors' names, you know, they would uh, have A as their first name. Aaron or something like that. Just so yeah. that be in the, the start. Because, yeah, alphabetical order was a big thing back in the day. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really, really good point. Or, you, like you say, next to the most popular uh, author. Yeah. So think about that. I wanted to change my nom de plume to Stephen King's. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Harry Potter you lady? Yeah. You yeah, need exactly. uh, Stephen King ah, uh, because if it is an S, maybe someone else will be before you on the shelf. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be before. <laughs> Kinger. Stephen Kinger. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen King A1. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, jeez. Yeah, so you're before him. You deserve an idea. Yeah. Someone's just running their finger across the bookshelf and they just grab grab it by accident. (laughs) (laughs) That's the marketing aspect. Let's think of the movie. I'm sure tons of movies have had this, but uh, the movie Troll 2, famously bad movie. Oh, yeah. Nothing to do with trolls, that whole movie. It's about goblins. No. <laughs> and, uh, they, literally, the movie was like written, produced, like the film was made, and then they titled it Troll 2 to just give it some kind of brand. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of... Uh... Of this very bad cartoon that Nostalgia Critic had on at some point. That, uh, was that... What? Oh, no, never mind. No, the Titanic was in Never mind. I was, I was the, just trying to get to talk about that. I was wrong. Hey, Pitt, say exterminate. <laughs> what? Say exterminate. Exterminate. <laughs> <laughs> Your voice is going through like a Dalek. Yeah, yeah, a microphone. Oh. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. So the, the cartoon's title was Titanic. And, oh, and supposedly right. it was about 
it was about the Titanic theoretically. It came out around the uh, oh, even I get what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And and it was literally about this giant this giant octopus that had issues, I, I guess. And and Titanic at some point is around and it's it, it's a cartoon that is a, a different story, and they just stuck a boat in so that they could call it Titanic. Yeah, so they could get on mm. the Leonardo DiCaprio film and get the same. Get on that thing. on that gravy train. And what about the um, the asylum? Is it the Asylum? Yes, it's the Asylum movie. I've never seen it. Uh, no, it's not. It's not a movie. Uh, it's a uh, it's a movie studio, and they do all these ripoffs. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just looked them up. Okay, uh, we have Transmorphers. <laughs> Snakes on a train. Thanks. Atlantic Rim. Paranormal Entity. They're actual movies too. They're not just parody. They're titles. actual movies. That's right. They're like movie. they're actual movies, and they're trying to trick you, <laughs> or they're just trying to whatever. Not necessarily trick you, but you know, they are. They're cashing in by you. being similar. Yeah, they're cashing in. They're they're getting on that, that trendy dick, right. riding that. They basically try to, to treat uh, a kid's a kid's grandma that wants to get him a present of his favorite yes. movie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's the bargain basement version. Let's see. And speaking of Titanic, apparently they made a movie called Titanic Two. <laughs> the second scene. Story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the resinking. Oh, the resinking. <laughs> you like the first time? We'll do it again. <laughs> Bad titles that, for some reason, didn't harm the film at all. Die harder. Yeah, yeah I, I think it works because die hard. Oh, yeah, die harder. But uh, but die hard. I mean, as a name, anyway, it's like. It, it speaks to the level of, I don't want to say intelligence of the movie, because I, I think Die Hard's great, but um, uh, but it, it speaks, once again, to what you can expect in something like Die Harder is like, it, it just follows in that same vein, like you're getting more of the same shit, dude, and like, you're gonna enjoy it, like Yeah, like once Die Hard is a brand, and it's, it's, it's a huge one, then you can mm-hmm. kind of, you just kind of hang your hat on that like die harder is not gonna sell itself but attach it to die hard and yeah totally it does however feel like uh it is asking to be made into an x-rated version as well yeah that's <laughs> my thoughts as well it's just a porn title <laughs> <laughs> well that tells us see baines and i are are a pair of heart and soul so we don't <laughs> Anything about that? Exactly. <laughs> that wouldn't even cross our minds. That's just your your dirty prerogatives. <laughs> it's, it's like Die Hard is sailing close to the wind on that, and Die Hard just says, "We're going all the way. We don't care anymore." Just... Maybe that's what it kind of wants because I mean, it is. I mean, it's not a porno, but it's it's a thrill ride. It's it's not risque in the same sense, but it's like you know, it's adrenaline. It's it's. You know, it's not, it's nothing with, it, you know, it's not deep thought, whole thought provoking work. It's yeah, Bruce Willis is gonna get the fuck in there. He's gonna rough yeah. shit up. You're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna it's it, it's action packed masturbation. Why not have it sound like a porno, dude? Why not? <laughs> you sound like That's it to me. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> Uh, well, we we can't go on for too long. We're like over almost uh, an hour and twenty minutes now. So, oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Was yeah. Good, good, uh, ta- a good um, idea this, for a quackcast. This, this quackcast die hard. It died hard. <laughs> it died hard. <laughs> I tried. I tried. All right. Oh well, we we'll, we'll say. Good night to, to people. Okay, goodbye. Thank you for listening goodbye. to Quackcast number 367. Bye-bye. Bye, Baines. Bye. 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 Bye, bits. Bye. Bye John Boy. Bye. <laughs>